Welcome back to another video guys. We're going to talk about a little bit of a controversy that's going on in Warpath with the change that they announced to the damage and damage resist buffs in the game. And this change is supposedly coming out in version 7.2. Essentially what they're doing is they're putting a 50% cap on the damage or damage resist attribute you can have on your unit in troop versus troop battles against another player. And what that means is if your damage, let's just use damage as an example, if your total damage percentage is 100% and you attack an opposing player's unit and their damage resist, let's just go with the easy baseline, is 0%, you are actually going to be restricted and capped at 50%. So the other 50% of your damage buff that you have that you've worked hard for in your tech research and your VIP and your skin sets basically gets automatically knocked off. Now realistically let's talk about how that impacts the game and we can look at their examples. Realistically nobody has a 100% damage buff attacking another player's troop that has 0%. Everybody generally has some kind of damage buff and 100% is actually very hard to achieve but we'll look at that in a second. So the examples that they gave are if both commanders damage and damage resist are at 0%, and they're using very small numbers here, keep in mind, 100 damage is actually a very small number, and 100 damage is dealt, it will result in the following. And the way they write these is very confusing, but it, it, if you kind of take it a little bit to understand it, it makes sense. So commander A's damage is 100%, and commander B's damage resist is 20% when the two players face off in battle. Before the adjustment, Commander A's damage minus Commander B's damage resist is 80%. Okay? So you have 100% damage, they have 20% damage resist, there's an 80% difference between the two. Okay? Commander A would deal 180 points of damage to Commander B, because again, keep in mind the baseline damage that they're talking about is 100 points of damage, and you essentially have an 80% damage, bo uh, damage bonus. Uh, subtracting their damage resist, so you multiply that by 1.8 and you get 180 points of damage. And so that is how the damage buff applies to your units. After the adjustment, Commander A's damage minus Commander B's damage resist is 80%. In this case, the difference will be calculated as 50%. So they're taking that 80% and they're just automatically going to bump it down to 50%. And essentially what they're trying to accomplish, as far as I can tell, is they don't want any player to have more than a 50% advantage over another player in either one of the damage or damage resist attributes. And they're doing this for game balance, so that's the reasoning. So instead of dealing 180 points of damage, it would deal 150 points of damage. Now, again, keep in mind they're using very small numbers. Units don't actually deal small numbers like 180 and 150. Uh, if you actually look at the numbers in the game, let's take a unit of mine and let's just attack a Raven troop. And if you look at the numbers in the game, they're far greater than 100, right? There's 78,000, uh, actually that was 788,000 is the actual damage number that I got dealt, okay? So if we go along with their formulas and let's just pull out the calculator to make this fast so let's take 700 let's just round it uh, let's just round it to 800,000 okay and let's assume that I have a hundred percent go along with their example of a hundred percent damage buff and let's just say the Raven troop think of that as an opposing player has a 20 percent and so my bonus is 80 percent so 800,000 really would become 1.4 million damage okay but if that really becomes 50 percent instead of 80 percent that 1.4 million really becomes 1.2 million okay so you lose basically 240,000 damage uh with the opposing player okay and it gets worse if your percentages are much higher okay so that's the impact that is going to happen on the game. Okay, so let's go back and look at some of their other examples. So example two, uh, very similar. Uh, well, is that the one we just read? No. 
Uh, commander's, Commander A's damage is 100%. Commander B's damage resist is 80%. Okay, so before the adjustment, right, the difference is 20%. So Commander would deal 120 points of damage to Commander B. That makes sense. After the adjustment, it's still 20% because it falls below that 50% threshold. There's no change. Now, in my opinion, 90% of players are going to fall under example two because if you're fighting in let's say while well, we have cairo going on we're a gold one we're fighting similar size alliances we're actually the weakest but in general most players have similar tech research similar advanced combat research similar military research okay so if you take two players they both have max military research they both have let's say max advanced combat research for tank okay then the difference between the two players really becomes things like your VIP level, skin set bonuses, um, also assuming alliance tech research is equal, um, diff point advantages uh, if you're fighting in or out of territory, okay? But those percentages, those differences are in 90% of circumstances not going to exceed 50%. So my thoughts are that this is not going to affect 90% of the player base. Who this will affect are the mega whales or very very large players attacking very very small players where there would be a drastic percentage difference now i'm going to break this down even further for you guys we're going to look at some real hard data from my account um, that i've kind of taken the liberty to aggregate for you guys so first off my vip level is 20. so what that means is I have some bonuses. Now, I do want to be specific here. They are not talking about changes to the firepower or HP attributes. And something we have to be careful about is it is not yet truly known how firepower and damage kind of play together and how this change is going to impact firepower, okay? So if we look at my artillery, it has 13.3 million firepower, okay? Now, damage in the game is a mechanic, and firepower is a mechanic. However, damage is the outcome of an equation based on firepower and troops. Okay, so if you click on the firepower icon here, make that a little bigger, you can see that my 13.3 million firepower is equal to, or the outcome of that equation, which includes firing rate, to, uh, of 2.72 seconds per shot and also accuracy hit rate okay and both of those are game attributes 38.4 percent the output of all of those metrics in the equation is just simple multiplication essentially at the end of the day is 694,000 damage okay is what my howitzer does so if that's the baseline is 694 again and we can take, like, let's say my total damage bonus is 100%, right? So 694,000 becomes essentially times two, right? Uh, 1.3, uh, almost 1.4 million is the actual damage my howitzer is going to do if I have a 100% damage buff, okay? So damage is significant if you can raise that percentage very, very high. Now, what we don't know though, is how damage and firepower affect things like officer skills. Because damage itself, first off, when you look at a battle report, I don't know if I actually have one. Let's, um, yeah, I don't actually, well, we can look, yeah, I do have, I have some favorites we can look at. So let's look at this one, okay? So like my howitzer in this battle report, unit damage dealt. That is what the damage buff and the damage resist buffs effect okay officer skill damage is a separate attribute what we don't know is how this change is going to affect or if it will affect firepower given that damage is the outcome of an equation from firepower or how this will affect officer skill damage being that we don't know if officer skill damage is based on damage unit damage or firepower okay we don't know what the calculations are so there's going to be a lot of discovery, I think, when the patch comes out, and a lot of playtesting to figure out what the total impact is. Now, going back to my account, 
you know, who is actually impacted by this change. If we go look at my profile again, VIP 20, you know, for example, I've got 20% firepower, 20% HP, no big deal. But I do actually have damage bonuses. So I have troop damage suffered minus 10%. I don't know if that's actually the same as damage resist because it's not called damage resist. So it's possible that the VIP bonuses might even be separate from the change they're making. Okay. There's also uh, troop damage inflicted 10%. So those two would be questionable. Now, my thoughts on that first off is, and I was actually upset when they first announced this change because I felt as if they were negating all the money and gold that I've spent to raise my VIP level. Because essentially, if I've worked on my account to raise those percentages as high as humanly possible, which is the whole design of the game, through doing your tech research and the parts system, upgrading your units, unit levels, and all of that, I felt as if basically they're saying, oh, all that money and gold that you've spent, it doesn't matter. You lose your 30%, right? If I'm at 80 and they're gonna cut it down to 50. But we don't know that. So I didn't get any confirmation from support on whether troop damage inflicted because they are generally specific in their wording in the game. So that's a question, okay? Right now I'm going to assume that it will be affected. So that's VIP 20, okay? Now we can go and look at other aspects of the game uh, that would affect, you know, call me a whale or whatever. I'm not really a whale. Um, skin set bonuses. Okay. Now skin set bonuses do matter here because they give troop damage. Okay. Troop and base damage, 8.5%. There is tank and helicopter damage resist, 2%. I've got artillery damage, 2%. Again, firepower not affected by the change. Troop and base damage resist 11.5%. And that's it as far as my skin set bonuses. And again, this is a troop versus troop change. It does not affect the base. But one thing we also don't know is does this affect the troops in the base? Does it affect garrison damage? We don't know. So let's switch over here. And I have a spreadsheet. I went through the game and I found everything through all the tech research and game mechanics that add damage and damage resist bonuses. Now I've excluded officers from this because again we want to look at this in context of player versus player and not and kind of trying to look at it from a an equal footing, right? So we'll talk about officers here in a bit. Okay. So essentially, military research does not actually grant any damage or damage resist bonuses. It grants firepower and HP. So military tech is out. Um, what does is alliance tech does grant damage percentages and damage resist percentages based on whether you are fighting in or out of your territory. So that matters. Okay. Advanced combat tech um, in each tech tree, they're pretty much the same. But so we're only so I only went and found uh, say tank. I didn't go through the artillery tree, uh, but they are the same. So if you have max advanced combat tech for tank, uh, your total damage percentage increase will be ten percent. Or actually, sorry, twenty percent. I have the different items here. So through smoothbore and tank missile research you'll have a total 20% damage buff from advanced combat tech. And you'll also have a total of 20% damage resist from advanced combat tech as well, okay? So if you think about it in that aspect, let's assume that two alliances fighting have equal alliance tech because that's pretty common. So let's just take that completely out of the equation. So it doesn't matter whether they have max alliance tech or zero alliance tech, let's just assume they're equal. So we don't have to consider that when looking at this change. What we do care about is advanced combat tech and also modern combat tech. Now, modern combat tech adds a little bit more. There's uh, 15, 10, 15, 15, 12.5, just for damage. Um, actually, you know what? I might have messed that up. Um, that might actually be damage, per uh, damage percentage and damage resist. I'll have to go back and double check if I mess that up. I think it actually is 
truly damage. Okay. Um, let's actually double check that. Let's see here. So we've got... Yeah, because it's different kinds, actually. So it's tank versus troop. So anyway, let's go back here and look at this comparison. So let's say also, for instance, that most people have not yet started modern combat tech. Let's just take that off. Okay. So this is a great way to think about it. Two players, troop versus troop battle, both have maxed advanced combat tank research. Okay. So both players essentially have 20% uh, damage percentage. And uh, let me take my personal skin sets and VIP 20 off. Okay, both players have a 20% damage buff and damage resist buff. Okay, so for 99% of players in the game, there's going to be no difference. Okay, you will not be affected by the change. Neither player uh, achieves more than that 50% threshold. Even if another player you're attacking has zero combat tech and you have max combat tech, you have a 20% advantage you're still a far cry away from 50%, okay? So no change there. So now let's start adding some things in that do matter. Let's add in another common one, uh, VIP 20, okay? Not that 20 itself is a uh, common thing, but let's just assume that VIP makes difference. So for me, I'm at VIP 20. So if you're not at, let's say you are you don't have a VIP level of any significance, my advantage over you if we both have advanced combat tech maxed, I have 30%, you have 20%, okay? So my advantage really over you is 10%. That's still a far cry away from 50%. There's still, that 40% margin is quite large, okay? Now let's add in skin sets, okay? I have quite a few skin sets in the game. So if we go look at what I have, you can see that I have collected quite a lot um, there's a lot of the earlier ones that I missed out on because I wasn't doing the Percy showroom at the time. But you can see going from there, I have quite an investment in completed skin sets. Okay, And skin sets cost big dollars to acquire. All right. So if we add in all my skin sets... I'm at 40%, 40.5% on damage percent and 43.5% on damage resist. Okay. So again, against another player with full advanced combat tech, my advantage now for damage is 20.5%. Okay. And damage resist is 23.5%. So even with my max tech, my max skin sets, and even if the opposing player had none of this, I'm still 10% shy of that 50% mark, okay? So I'm not affected by the change, basically. So what really then would this truly affect, okay? So let's take out skin sets. Let's take out VIP 20. Now let's look at it in context of officers, okay? Tip of Spear and Valkyrie is a very popular setup. This is where the percentages get quite large. So again, we're only looking at advanced combat tech and officers. Damage percent for Tip of Spear and Valkyrie combined is 100%, okay? Now at certain times, because their officer skills are timed, so Tip of Spear is a four second window. Valkyrie also has a four second window or something like that, okay? They're not, per uh, Tip of Spear does add some percentage of firepower. He has a 20% firepower buff, I believe. So if we go look at tip. Where do you need me and my men? Okay. 20% firepower. Not affected by the change. He does have 15% damage resist, so that is permanent. Um, he does have blast damage resist. Again, not, a, not affected, right? They're talking damage resist, not blast damage resist. Different mechanic. At least, I'm assuming. So combined though, we've now reached a damage percentage of 100%, okay? So here's, here's where the effect comes into play. If I'm attacking a player, let's say who's running, who also has advanced combat tech, Max, and let's say they're running Steel Fighter, 
Okay. Who has uh, 15% damage, so that doesn't matter. Um, but she also has 8% damage. So basically nothing, though. Let's just call it 15 for the sake of the example. And I'm also running Thorn, who has, I believe, damage. We don't care about that at the moment. Officer skills. So she doesn't actually have a damage resist attribute. So let's just call Steel Fighter 15. Okay. So I'm attacking a main battle tank with my helicopter. I'm running Tip of Spear Valkyrie. They're running Steel Fighter and Thorn. And they have 15% damage resist. And I have 100% damage. I lose, they're gonna cap me and essentially remove 25% of my damage advantage over that enemy troop. Okay, now, 25% is pretty significant. Now add in my VIP and my skin sets. Okay. And now I'm losing close to 100%. I'm losing about 90, 95, 94.5, 95% damage. Well, not that much. Sorry, they cap it, uh, they cap it at 50. So again, if they've got 15%, so 120 uh, let's just call 120 even. So my advantage would be 105 percent. So actually, I lose 55 percent of damage on that enemy troop. Okay. So even free-to-play players are impacted by this change, depending on the officers that you run on your unit and the officers that your enemy troop runs on their unit. Okay. So what does that mean? Ultimately, what that means is that units will probably survive longer. It will be harder to one shot or do significant damage to an enemy troop, um, in my opinion. And again, I can only look at this in context of damage. So we don't know how it's going to actually affect the total outcome at the end of the day. They're not talking about firepower. We don't know what the calculations are because in, in games like this, um, and I'll use a trading card game, Yu-Gi-Oh! as an example, uh, there's a damage step and damage calculation. And damage calculation, the whole point is to do all the equations on how many points you're gonna take off your opponent, okay? Damage is just one aspect of that. You know, we know that damage is the outcome of firepower, but the way they talk about this, you know, would I assume is that 13.3 million firepower, I got 694 damage, all the damage buffs and damage resist buffs are applied in context to that final number, 694. Okay, that's what I assume. So you still want to raise your firepower as high as humanly possible, I think is ultimately what we're going to want to do after the change. Okay, but I'm not 100% sure. So... But yeah, even free-to-play players are going to be impacted by this change because you can reach those very high percentages through the officer system. It gets, now also in this calculation, by the way, I'm only considering the core officer skills, okay? I'm not considering the skill training system. So the 100 or the 50% for tip of spear and 30% does not include additional trained skills just to make this all more simple at the end of the day. Okay, so it is possible through cross training your officers, I could raise this percentage all the way close to 150%. Okay, so again, take that in context. If I'm attacking another player with only 15% damage resist, and my advantage is 135%. They're gonna remove. They're gonna cap that all the way down to fifty percent. That is a that is an extreme change. Okay, so it will be harder to kill units. Uh, just going throughout the battlefield and just probably annihilating troops left and right with high powered units, nine point two and stuff, may become much more difficult. But I don't really know. So this is how I've viewed the change and understood what the impact is going to be, and I've kind of looked at different things 
And if you look at all things combined, again, and these percentages are going to look very, very high because essentially um, on my spreadsheet, I've documented the maximum total percentage you can achieve if you have that max research. Okay, so most players haven't even dented modern combat tech. A lot of players do not even have max advanced combat tech. So this 198%, um, you know, if I take out my VAP, Valkyrie, Tip of Spear, my skin sets, we just look at research alone. Um, if you had max alliance tech, max advanced combat tech, max modern tech, uh, your baseline damage buff would be 147.5%. Oh, let me, sorry, let me take out Tip of Spear. I didn't do that. 97.5% would be your baseline okay so this definitely will affect the mega whales more than anything but it will also affect every player in the game and they're basically saying that they're doing this for game balance but i am unsure if this is a good change because the whole premise of the game is your advantage over another player is all the hard work and money that you've spent on the game. And even if you're not a spender, if you're a player that's been playing this for two years like I have, and you have been on top of micromanaging your resources, you've been on top of doing daily arms and battle honors and completing those to their full maximum extent possible, and your research is way far ahead of the average player because you really are great at micromanaging and setting up your officer's skill training system, you are going to be penalized. And so in that aspect, I think this is a very negative change to the game because you're penalizing the players that have actually invested all that hard work and time, and you're incentivizing players that pretty much don't invest any time at all or they completely suck at the game. So balance is iffy as a reason, given that the whole game design is designed around increasing percentages as high as possible and having that advantage over the opposing player. That's why people even spend money on the game. And by the way, money funds the game, which they know this, they're a business, they operate. So I don't know if this is the dev team doing this. I don't know if product management is involved. I just find it a very odd change. So we will have to see how it's ultimately going to affect the game. But recently for me, after two years, I've maxed tank research all the way and I've closed out my artillery research all the way. I'm not very far on air. I've started modern combat tech. I have a little bit of advanced city tech and my research is pretty far ahead. Uh, the average player in my server who's also played for two years. Okay. Um, and I've got other people that are free to play and not pay to play like I am a little bit uh, who have equivalent research, right? They've worked even harder than I have. So everybody will be impacted to a different degree, but people who've invested a lot of time and even money are definitely impacted more. So I understand them wanting to balance the game between the free-to-play players and the whales, the mega whales. But to an extent, you know, other than the big alliances like Mass, T01, and G27, G28, on most servers like us, our level fours have actually been very balanced. Um, we go gold one, which is the highest we can go without going to legendary. In our Cairo battlefield, these are 20 billion power alliances, okay? So we're actually the weakest at 12.7 billion. If we look at the other alliances in our Cairo, uh, we've got 19.5, 17.4, 16, 13.8, 17, 18. Okay. And we are doing just fine because we've built the alliance with very few farm players, very few alt players. We have a good active core. And the advantage that... Uh, uh, you know, whales have it, of course, by themselves have an advantage of being very strong on their own. Um, the way you beat them is through teamwork and team play. That's how you do it. And I can tell you for our level four, 
there are not very many whales okay in our field we've got one which is on our alliance at 361 313 285 259 253 251 and keep in mind that these players are running 40 percent troop expansion buffs okay uh, like we look at scott rod who's our player 213 is his actual power level that's not a whale um i'm at 235 my actual power is like 198 that's not a whale and so it's pretty balanced actually okay and even the newer server server 39 uh which i think in this Cairo is a very good alliance um you know so fdw they're the newest server at 39 in our field they but they have 239 players we have 97 okay so put that into perspective and they're 239 of very active players okay that's the advantage that they have over high power players so anyway that's what i've identified the impact as being um they're doing it for balance how it's ultimately going to affect the game i think there's a lot unknown they've only broken it down in terms of damage and damage resist not talking about how it's going to affect all other mechanics you know if even it's going to affect officers but i think from one of the other youtubers who was talking to a vip customer service agent they basically i think implied that yes it's going to also apply to officer skills any anything that raises the damage and damage resist bonuses i think for the most part though i think it sounds like they're trying to get rid of the extremes right getting rid of those extreme percentages and kind of putting everybody on a more even playing field but that's just not how the game is designed the game is designed for you to push as far ahead as humanly possible to actually have an advantage so you can win so anyway guys that's kind of my take on it let me know what you think in the comments below um i'd like to hear your thoughts i will discuss it with you even i've been talking about this a lot on the warpath discord i've expressed my concerns to warpath team through the support channels um, especially for those that put money and time into the game um, i'm not sure they've thought this through they played it probably played on the test server but this will be out in the next version of the game 7.2 which is uh coming soon i don't have i don't know the date uh, but given all the communication that they've started putting out, you can expect 7.2 to be around the corner. So let me know what you think. Definitely don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. You're watching DX7 Gaming. We will see you next time. Bye, guys.